I'm Dr. Eleanor Walker. I'm a radiation oncologist at Henry Ford Hospital, and my area of specialty is breast radiation oncology. What is radiation? Well, radiation therapy for cancer is using high energy x-rays to kill cancer cells, and it kills cancer cells by damaging the nucleus, the DNA of a cell, which is what a cell reproduces with. So radiation damages the DNA of a cancer cell. It also can damage the DNA of a normal cell, but normal cells have ways of fixing damage before they reproduce, hence they repair themselves. Cancer cells don't have these controls to allow them to repair themselves, so they try to reproduce and they die. The side effects for, of radiation therapy for the breasts are very specific. Radiation in general is a local treatment, so it only will affect the area that we pointed at, which would be your breasts, or if we have to treat the lymph nodes or the glands of the neck that the breast drains to or under the arms, those areas will be affected. So initially, when you start off, people don't really have any side effects. The first two weeks of treatment, they're like, is the machine working? Because they don't feel anything. The last two weeks, sometimes people develop tiredness from radiation. Why is that? Well, your body is working extra to help the radiation kill the cancer cells. So it's burning more calories. And if you're not taking in enough calories, you're gonna get tired. Well, a way to obviate that is to exercise. And we recommend cardiovascular exercise at least 30 minutes, three times a week at a moderate level where you can talk but not sing while you're doing the exercise. So after the first two weeks of radiation, then you'll start to notice that if you are treating the breasts, that the breasts will start to feel heavy. It's gonna feel tender. It's gonna swell a little bit. Then you'll notice the skin of your breasts will get a little bit red, dry, itchy, then it's gonna darken. Now usually, in order to help minimize the side effects of radiation, we recommend certain ointments that you use every day, twice a day, to help delay the onset of the skin reaction and to decrease the severity of it. But everybody has a little bit of a skin reaction, and it depends also on your sensitivity to the sun. So if you're very sensitive to the sun, you've gotta make sure you're really good about putting these ointments on. So usually, by the end of radiation treatment, most women feel like they're pregnant with a sunburn <laughs> or tan. But once treatment is over, just as everything came on kind of gradually, it goes away gradually and your skin will come back to its normal color and any swelling you have of the breasts will go down. If we have to treat the glands of the neck, that also will get a little red, a little dry. Sometimes people get a little bit of a tickle in their throat, but that usually will reverse once radiation is over. One of the things that people worry about a lot is loss of hair. Only if you have hair on your breasts will you lose any hair. Radiation does not, to the breasts, does not make you sick to your stomach, nor does it cause hair loss on your head. Now, the hair that's under your arm, you probably will lose some of it permanently because part of the breast extends under your arm. So we have to make sure we treat that area. Sun is a type of radiation. That's why when people lay in the sun without any protection, they got sunburn. So that's why we recommend using various ointments and creams to help prevent that from happening so that you don't get a bad, quote unquote, sunburn. In terms of your lungs, there's very little of the lung that gets radiation treatment. If anything, it's just maybe a one inch thick area right beneath the breast that gets radiation while you're getting treatment to the breast because the breast sits right on top of the chest wall. And hence, a little bit about that thick gets it. It's not something that's going to prevent you from breathing, cause any major damage. If you have asthma, it's not gonna induce your asthma. But if you were to take a chest x-ray, 
say one year after treatment, a radiologist would be able to look at it and see that you had radiation. Now the only time there can be some scatter radiation to a person's heart from radiation is if we're treating your left breast. The right breast, the heart is totally on the other side. So therefore, we use special techniques to help protect the heart when we're treating the left breast. In order to treat you with radiation, we first have to do something called a simulation. So it's kind of the dry run of the treatment. And what we do is we place you on your back in the treatment position in an immobilization device that allows us to position you in the same position every day. And then we use a specially made CAT scanner for radiation or sometimes an MRI scanner so that we scan the area that we want to treat. And if it's your left breast, we'll be able to see the heart, we'll be able to see the lung. So therefore, we'll be able to protect those areas when we do the planning for your breast. The dose of radiation it takes to kill cancer cells differs by the type of cancer it is. So lymphomas, which are malignancies of the lymphatic system, are more sensitive to radiation. So you can treat them in a shorter period of time. Prostate cancer, for example, is less sensitive than breast cancer. So it takes a longer period of time to give the dose that is required to kill those cells. Breast cancer is somewhere in the middle. Now sometimes, depending on the stage of your breast cancer and your age, we can sometimes give radiation in a shorter treatment time. But in general, most patients get treated for about between six and seven weeks on a daily basis. The treatment itself is very short. It only takes maybe seven to 10 minutes to give the treatment, five minutes to set you up on the table. So you're really only on the treatment table about 15 minutes a day. But the problem is if we gave the dose of radiation it takes to kill breast cancer cells all at once, it would damage all the normal tissues also. So what we're trying to do is a balance. We're trying to give you a high enough dose to kill the cancer cells, but a low enough dose to minimize damage to normal tissues.